This shutter is a uh, Synchro Compo. It's from a fairly early Retina 2A camera, or one of the earlier Retina 2A cameras to be fitted with the Synchro Compo shutter. Uh, the earliest Retina 2A cameras were fitted with a uh, Compo Rapid shutter, of course. So I'm just going to assemble the diaphragm on this. And I thought I'd show you this one because the diaphragm blades are a funny shape. They have all got this cutout on them. The whole lot. Now, on earlier shutters, I've seen that occasionally. I've never seen it with all the blades. Typically some of the blades have got a cut out and not a useful sort of number typically. It's not as though every second blade is like that. It'll be some odd number, some odd percentage. So I've never been able to put my finger exactly on what the purpose of it was and where there are plain blades and blades with the cut, cut away how they should be is there a difference in the order you should assemble them I think that the whole blades are easier to get positioned and typically when I've got a shutter with some blades with the cutaway and some without the cutaway. The blades without the cutaway I use in the last four positions. I can see I'm getting this blades are getting tangled up here because of the cut. They're hooking under each other. So these are diaphragms are harder to assemble because of the cut. It was something that was done for a short period of time and then it stopped. I can only think that it was not a useful thing or they didn't find it helpful for assembly. Why was it done at all? I could only think that it was done to make the um, blades less likely to reduce the friction of the blades passing over each other probably because you've got smaller areas in contact. But it does make it difficult to get these blades correctly positioned. So as I say, not having done one where all the blades were like this, I'm going to see how I get on here. Got one more to place. But the hard part is going to be getting the existing blades lifted back over the top here. There are too many edges that can catch on each other. If you strike a shutter that's got blades like this, don't be surprised if you find it quite difficult to assemble them. It is difficult. much more so than usual. I'm 
Now if we can get the case on. Flip that over. Get my locating screws into the retainer plate here. That's the countersunk screw. The other two are plain heads. I'll just run these screws down lightly because I don't know yet that I've got all the blades fully seated. Or that I don't know that all the blades have their pivots fully seated in the fixed the cover plate, the retainer, or the other piece underneath with the slots in it. So I'm just counting all of those pins are in place. try and the blades are open and closed so that's good I've got everything in place there nothing was displaced that's all good that was a good result but as I say it's more difficult to deal with blades with those cutouts you have too many edges to catch on each other when you're trying to manipulate those blades into place it is very free running. Whether the fact that it's very free running can be put down to the fact that there are those cutouts on the blades, again, I don't know. There's something stuck on the blade there. But um, regardless, there you have it. And this was on a, an early Synchro Compoil shutter. On a Retina 2A camera. It's very strange. It's not a feature you'd commonly see.